Hello everyone! In this week's video, I'm turning myself into a VTuber. So at the end of October, the program VRoid officially released. In the past, I used the beta version of VRoid to make a 3D version of my OC Doris. And now that the more finished version is out, I've been really wanting to play around with it and test out the new features. Also, VRoid is free and they are not sponsoring this video. <laughs> I just wanted to use the program. Anyways, I thought about making one of my OCs again, but I thought it might be more fun to try to make myself a VTuber model. If you don't know what a VTuber is, basically it is a character model that people use for live streams or videos. It can be a way of showing yourself on camera without needing to show yourself on camera, I guess. Also, before we jump into the video, I want to thank Torbox for sending me their product. Are you tired of having your keyboard placed in an awkward position when you're drawing at the computer? Or when you're editing videos, do you ever wish you didn't need to memorize a ton of different keyboard shortcuts? If you answered yes to either of these, I think you'll be really interested in the Torbox. Torbox simplifies the equipment required for digital art creation and video editing. It can not only set the functions of the mouse and keys on a keyboard, but it also provides numerous other convenient functions. So you can complete your creation via a single hand blind operation. You can think of it as like a fancy video game controller for your digital art and video editing software. It's way faster and easier than reaching around my tablet for my keyboard. <laughs> it's super easy to set up and customize. If you don't want to take the time to customize the Torbox yourself, you can download pre-made setups from the Torbox website. There are tons of different presets to choose from for all kinds of different software. The Torbox Neo is a really amazing device and I highly recommend it to anyone that does a lot of work on the computer like I do. If you're interested in getting your own Torbox so you can simplify your creation process, there is a link in the description. Plus you can use this code to get 10% off your purchase. So go check out the Torbox Neo because it's really cool. Anyways, let's get back to the video. So I've opened Vroid, we can see some of the models I made in the beta version. To make a new character, I click create new and select if I want a feminine or masculine base. I'm a girl so I'll pick the feminine one. Okay, so here's the base model. One thing I really like about this version compared to the beta version is that there are different eye shapes to choose from and there seems to be overall more customization options. In the old version, you used to have to do a lot more drawing and changing of textures, but with this one, you can just click and pick from different defaults as well as change textures. So there's a lot more options. So with my Doris model I made in the past, I didn't really make the model look like my art style. Like I kinda tried to, uh, but yeah, I didn't really know what I was doing. <laughs> but this time around, I want to try to make it look a bit more like my style, including my shading style. So right now, I'm using the slider on the right to adjust the face. I draw eyes really big, so I make the eyes as big as I can. I also just play around with the overall proportions of the face. Oh, also, you can give characters elf ears now, and I think that's so cool. I don't think this was an option in the old Vroid. Anyways, after adjusting the facial features to my liking, I start to work on the irises. I want the irises to match my shading style, so I'm changing the eye texture. I was going to try to change the texture within Vroid, but the tools are kind of limiting and a bit annoying to use. <laughs> uh, so I decided to just export the default texture and use Clip Studio Paint to modify the texture instead. So yeah, I just opened the texture file into Clip Studio Paint and shade the irises how I usually shade them. I like to make the eyes have a lot of contrast and look really shiny, so I add a lot of highlights. Oh, uh, also here's a picture of what I look like. Obviously, I'm making myself in my style for this model. I don't think I'm this cute or anything like that. <laughs> I'm taking artistic liberty and making myself more anime and all that. I always think it's funny when people see like characters that people draw of themselves and people will be like, you aren't nearly that pretty or that cute, but like the artist is just drawing themselves in their style. So like, yeah, <laughs> just don't get angry at me, please. Okay, so after shading the eyes, I import the texture into Vroid and the eyes are now starting to look more like my style. Next, I edited the sclera of the eye. I often apply a bluish shadow along the top of the sclera, so I added that. The default eyelids are indicated of shading, but I thought I would use some line art to maybe help my models have sort of a 2D feel to it. 
So I draw some lines for the eyelids like I usually do. And this was actually kind of tricky. I don't know. Drawing in V-Roid and making lines look nice is just kind of difficult for some reason. Uh, but I tried to make them look the best I could. I also added a bit of pink cell shading around the lines to give a cell shaded look to the model. Next is changing the texture of the face. Also, can I just say the texture of the face when it's unwrapped looks kind of funny. <laughs> it looks really weird. Anyways, I got rid of all the default shading and start going in with my own shading. It's really interesting shading a 3D model and also tricky because you have to think in 3D and how everything looks from different angles. It's a very different thought process compared to 2D drawing. The trickiest part was my nose. I usually add some soft shading to the nose and also a shadow underneath it. Applying the soft shading was pretty simple, but adding the shading to the underneath part was a bit tricky. I kept needing to look at it from different angles and I was trying my best to make it look good. And I was also trying to add nostrils like I usually do but I was having a hard time making them look how I wanted, uh, so I got rid of them for now. <laughs> I ended up adding them in later because I liked them later on. The lips I actually had a lot of fun shading. I feel like it really changes the look of the model and made it feel like more my style. It also just gave a kind of nice cell shading feel that I really like. Oh, and of course I needed to add the blush. I always love adding blush. Next, I wanted to adjust the eyelashes and to do that, I need to change the eyelash texture. To make the eyelashes, I basically just needed to draw some triangular shapes and try to line them up how I want them. I kind of wish I could have made the eyelashes go higher up on the eye, but I had to keep them closer to the sides. I didn't know how to make them be set higher up on the eye. Now that the face is done, I can start working on other elements. Right here, I am changing the skin texture to include a drop shadow under the neck. Once again, just to make things feel a bit more illustrative. I almost forgot to add the shadow along the back of the neck. <laughs> Once again, thinking of shading in 3D is really different than 2D. I randomly clicked on the facial expression tab and my facial expressions by default were really weird. The eyebrows kept being super low on the face. It's probably because I made the eyes way bigger and changed where they are placed so the eyebrows no longer work correctly. Uh, so I had to go through each emotion and modify it using the sliders on the right. Oh, also quick tip, don't change the mouth for the left and right close. If you do, your mouth will move when you blink. I learned that the hard way and it took me so long to figure out why my mouth was moving when I was blinking. It was really confusing and I couldn't find anything about it online. One feature I'm very excited about is that we can now give our V-Ride model glasses. This was not an option in the beta version and people would need to use hair to make the glasses. Uh, you would need to see it to get what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, but now we can just add glasses and they are pretty customizable. Like with the face, I just use the sliders on the right to change the features of the glasses. I am even able to change the texture of the glasses to make them match my glasses in real life. For the glass in the glasses, I wasn't a fan of the transparent gray. Instead, I just added a gradient of white that fades out to help indicate the glass. This is often how I shade glasses in my illustrations. And I feel like it worked nicely here. So now that the head is looking good, I can move on to the hair. This part sounds fun, but to be honest, it was pretty frustrating. I'm not a V-Roid expert, I've only used it a few times, so for people that use it often, they probably know how to make complicated hairstyles and make them look really good, but I really struggled. I made my hair three different times. <laughs> I won't make you watch all three times, I'll just show you the footage from throughout the process. Uh, so there are default hairstyles you can pick from, but none of them match my hair, so I need to make my own. I'm starting by changing the hairline. My hairline, I guess, is kind of a widow's peak. So it goes down in the middle. Uh, so I drew the hairline doing that. That part was pretty simple. The harder part was making the hair pieces at the front. I needed them to curve up so we can see the underside, like with how I draw my hair. But I didn't really know how to make the hair do that. I eventually found a video of someone modeling the hair with the bangs going like this and basically they make the mesh look like this 
it goes down into the head and then bumps up. Oh, also, it's pretty easy to add strands of hair. You kind of just use the brush tool and then draw a strand along the mesh. Uh, I also have the symmetrical ruler on, so both sides are the same. So I drew the two strands and I also added a little tiny strand just to make things a little bit different. So I drew in a few more strands and got those in place. After I had finally figured out the front, I felt like the back would be easy, but I struggled with that too. <laughs> A part of it is probably just me being super picky and trying to make it perfect. Like my other attempts were probably okay, but they weren't completely to my liking. Uh, plus by the third attempt I had gotten more comfortable with the tools and controlling the hair, so that helped a lot. Plus one thing that was super helpful is that I found a different setting. Something I kept having trouble with is when I would fill in the back of the hair. The sides would be filled in, but the top of my head wouldn't be filled because the strands would taper and get thinner. So I would kind of have bald spots on the top of my head. But if I try to add more strands to fill in the top, things would get really full along the sides and look kind of janky. Well, the setting I found is one that makes it so I can change where and how the strand tapers. Once I found this, things became so much easier because I could make the strands start out really thick at the top so it covers the scalp and I don't need to add as many strands. Thankfully, it was pretty smooth sailing once I figured that out. So here is how the hair turned out in the end. I'm not even going to try to explain how I made the little strands that stick up out of my head because I didn't really know what I was doing and I just kind of kept moving around tiny hair strands until I thought they looked okay. <laughs> After hours of trying to figure out the hair, I can finally move on to the clothing. During one of my hair attempts, I did make an outfit, but my mom saw it and she said that the outfit made my model look too chubby and that I'm not that chubby in real life. Uh, so I tried to make the sweater tighter, but it doesn't get any tighter than this. So I decided to go look through the different options and found this sweater. I'm using air quotes because it's actually a dress that doesn't have the skirt colored in. Um, so if I were to fully color the texture, it would be a dress, but if you only color the top, it looks like a sweater. Uh, so my sweater can't be any longer. It has to be cropped because or else we'll see the skirt. Uh, for the sweater, I didn't feel like shading it, so I kept the default shading, but to keep the default shading and make the sweater teal, I need to change these settings over here. But when I change this, it makes it so I can't use white because it turns white into teal. It sounds kind of confusing, but it makes sense when you're using the program. So I couldn't make my collar white, so I decided to just make it a dark teal. I don't totally love it, but at this point I was starting to run out of steam and I just wanted the model to be done, so I was getting lazy. So yeah, maybe I'll make my outfit more fancy in the future, but for now this will work. Also for the pants, they were all kind of bulky and the lower half of me doesn't really matter because we are mostly going to see the upper half. So I just made the skin tight shorts really long by painting in the entire texture and made them into leggings. Uh, so here's my model's outfit and now we can take a look at my model in action. So here she is doing some of the default animations in Vroid. I don't know if I should say I or she <laughs> because it's kind of me. Uh, but I feel like it turned out nicely and kind of captures my art style a bit. I feel like it's an improvement compared to the Doris model I first made. Okay, so my model is done, but now I need a software to make it so my model acts like a VTuber and all that stuff. So I exported my model as a VRM file. This will make it so it's compatible with different capture softwares and just different programs and stuff. So after doing some research, I decided to download VMagic Mirror. I chose this software because it is free, plus you can use it if you don't have a webcam, and I think that's really cool. So this is V Magic Mirror and my model is loaded into it. Also, like I mentioned, you don't need a webcam. If your mic picks up audio, the model will start moving in a way that makes it look like it's talking and not just standing there with its mouth moving. <laughs> so I feel like this is a really nice option if you don't have a webcam. But of course, if you have a webcam, you can use that to capture your motion. Thankfully, my laptop does have a webcam built into it. Also, you can change what expression your model makes when you press a key on your keyboard. So like when I press the number one key, it makes my model look happy. 
I made sure to check keep lip sync active so I can keep talking as the model makes the face. Okay, now that I've set up my model in V Magic Mirror, let's see my model in action. Also, I'm using the program OBS to capture Minecraft and my model at the same time. Uh, you can look up tutorials on YouTube on how to do this. That's what I did. Okay, so now I'm using my model. I have face tracking on, so when I move my head, we can see that my face moves with me. And when I move my mouse, I move my hand. And when I tap a button on my keyboard, it makes my hand tap. <laughs> Uh, so to test out my model, I thought maybe we could play a little bit of Minecraft. Um, I'm playing on our family server. I have shown this before in a video a little bit, but I thought maybe I'd show you it a bit more. And plus we'll get to see my model in action, so it'll be fun. And since it's nighttime, I guess I'll go to sleep. And I'll show you my brother Joel's house. I do notice that it would be hard to change the expression of my model when I'm playing a game. Uh, not that I really need to at the moment because I'm just kind of ah, oh. <laughs> the skeleton hit me. <laughs> uh, but like right there, it would have been fun if my V-Roy model would have changed to a shock face because I was making a surprised face. I do know there's a program called VC Face and it actually tracks like your facial expressions. So maybe I would try that. Okay, so we're walking up at my brother Joel's house and he has a bunch of sugar cane. Everyone's always asking to farm his sugar cane because he has so much of it. Uh, he probably doesn't know I'm gonna show his house in this video. <laughs> it's just I wasn't sure what else to do. Uh, but Joel's house is quite fancy. He has a farm and he has flowers. I actually haven't seen his house in a while, so this is all really cute. Uh, so now let's go inside the house. Whoa, <laughs> there's a lot of people in here. I forgot he had his own uh, villagers that he trades with. And this is also his doggy. Uh, so yeah, that's a bit of our family Minecraft realm server. So after testing out my model with the Magic Mirror, I did download VC Face and give it a try. VC Face tracks your face and its movement. So it can change facial expressions depending on what your face is doing. Um, here is how that went. Okay, so now I'm in VC face and as you can see it is tracking my face and facial expressions But it's a little weird uh, Because it kind of changes facial expressions uh, Even when I don't really want it to like it likes to change to the surprised one And I'm not totally sure how to fix that and it also likes to go between my default like neutral face and also my smiling face like back and forth as I'm talking. It's a little weird. Uh, if you have any tips for this, I'd really love to hear some. Because uh, I'm not a big fan of it changing facial expressions all the time as I'm talking. Uh, but yeah, I don't know if I'll be using VC face because uh, I, I think I kind of like V Magic Mirror a little bit more. Uh, at the moment anyways. Uh, but if you have any tips, that'd be very helpful. So now I have a VTuber model. It's kind of fun and neat. I'm not sure what I'll use it for. Maybe if I ever get into streaming or making gaming videos again, I would use it for that. I guess I could replace my chibi version of myself, but I'm kind of attached to it, so I don't know if I want to get rid of it. <laughs> but it was a lot of fun turning myself into a VTuber, and I hope you enjoyed watching this process. Before we end the video, I want to thank my wonderful patrons over on Patreon for supporting my work. It means so much to me and I'm so thankful for them. And thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you all next week in my next video. Bye!